This video is not going to be a full Fusion 360 tutorial, but a look at the workflow that I go through to design and model up my furniture. I'm going to start with parameters as there is a lot we already know that I can define to get started with the design so we're not guessing later on. I know that the desk width is going to be 1800 because we've measured the room. It'll actually be a little bit less than that, but 1800 is a good number to work with. It needs to be something like 1790. Height, we want ours at 720, as that's the height our current desks are, and we find that quite comfortable. And this is a bit of an odd design in that I am working from a known material first, rather than buying my material to suit the design. In this case, we're working with the birch plywood that is 24 millimeters thick. That 24 millimeters will define a few other things later on. For example, if we're laminating two pieces of plywood, we know that that's gonna to come to 48. So that number is gonna be used fairly frequently. I always like to put my projects in a subcomponent. I just find that easier to move the whole thing around if I need to. Right, we're going to start with the desktop uh, and sort of work our way down because that's the easiest way to really approach this. This is the most known quantity and then the lower to the ground we get the less I know as I'm going. Now, one of the little design details we did add in was those uh, mitered edges or beveled edges. Mitered edges is probably more accurate. And they came out to 200 uh, on each axis. Now, I know that the material thickness is 24, so I can extrude by that. Uh, and I find it quite helpful to actually have the proper textures in place. So, I have, I think I've made some up. Yep, there we go, some birch. And that doesn't quite cover the edges because that's just using the same design everywhere. So if we switch over to faces, we can use the birch edge on the edges of the plywood. Now it's not a big deal to do this, but I find that it really makes it easier to visualize what something's gonna look like if it's vaguely similar to what it will look like. I think that's probably a little bit uh, too large. See that it's a bit blurry. Oh, there we go, that's a lot better. For now, I'm gonna ignore the uh, black stripe I've got across. Uh, it doesn't make a massive difference for the modeling process. Much like the appearance being in the correct texture, I also like to put in uh, fillets or roundovers. So that's F or fillet. So we select all our edges. And this is a trick I use from time to time to determine whether a particular roundover bit is gonna be well, too large or just fine. We're going after a square look, but we want the edges broken um, just so it looks softer. So it feels softer, not look softer. There we go, that looks pretty all right. Because I have to make two desks, I want to reduce the amount of different components as much as possible. So the leg is going to be pretty much the same on all pieces. There will be some minor differences and we'll see that a little bit later, but for now, this is what we're going to end up with. And one of the things we know is the height, which is desk height minus material thickness, because we're going to account for the desktop but we don't know the width. Uh, we know that the desk depth is 800. So perhaps we'll take off 200. That seems reasonable. It should be well balanced. Now that we've got that established in relation to the desk, obviously this can move a little bit later, but I'll turn off the desk so I'm not referencing off that. I want all the rail and style pieces to be twice the width of the material. Uh, that way when I laminate them up, it doesn't really matter which way they're facing uh, and it'll give a sense of symmetry, I suppose. Uh, 
I don't want the bottom rail to be on the floor, so I've got that a little bit higher. Uh, and I think if we use that same 48 so material thickness times two, uh, that looks pretty good for a side panel leg type thing. Again, this may not be the absolute correct way to do things in Fusion, but it works for me. Now this central section will be a panel. Now I'm not going to put in all the grooves and things like that as honestly, that doesn't matter to be modeled for me. I know that grooves need to be in various positions. So I'll just add that in later. I'm going to go with nine millimeter plywood uh, because it's sort of a compromise between six and 12 in terms of strength and cost. I will however, bring that panel forward So that it is flush with the front. And then to the correct offset. Again, it doesn't look like much, so if we throw on some of our textures, uh, it's gonna improve its looks. The central panel is not going to be plain birch. Um, we were going to go with like a tiger striping type pattern, but we've come up with a few different bits and pieces. So we'll make a new material. Actually, we'll base that on birch. hasn't quite come out the uh, way I wanted it to, so let's see if we can scale that a bit better. There we go. That's close enough, I think. Scale is slightly off. But this is a drawing that my wife did of our cat. It's similar to the pattern on the tea tray, except all geometric shapes to match in with the theme of the desk. All right, so if we turn the top back on, we can see the placement is way off. Uh, there are gonna be three legs per desk, one single leg off on one side, and then two legs in close proximity and joined with some other rails to hold the computer up. So in terms of position, I think we probably want these legs centered which would be roughly about there and on this direction uh, probably just before that mitre there so by duplicating the leg uh, if I make any changes to it they'll all change and I don't have to do anywhere near as much work computer cases I believe are about 200 mil wide, so that should be enough space for now, and I'll have to measure that later. So they're now their own subcomponents, so it's much easier to move them both in tandem, as well as add the other details that we need to. All right, from here, the desk overall design is mostly done. It's some mechanical things we need to add in. So as it stands with the three legs, this would probably be relatively stable, but there are ways to make it much more stable, and that would be adding a brace at the back. Now, as this is a desk uh, for a computer, we're going to have a lot of cables, so we can use that to our advantage and have the brace act as an L bracket uh, to act as the cable run. So cables can sort of fall in this area here. Perhaps I'll add in some offcuts like that. I'm not sure at this stage. And the legs can be braced with this piece here. So if we're coming in 200 from each edge, that's gonna make it 1400. Yeah, we'll leave it like that and it can always be cut down 
uh, when actually building the thing. I think some of my placements are a little bit off. Yeah, there we, we go. We can see that uh, this leg needs to move over a little, and so does the other pair. So if we come from this side, let's move it point to point. The problems with uh, Fusion 360 is a lot of the things change on it uh, between versions and sometimes what I do just doesn't seem to work. Uh, this positioning is off but I'm happy to uh, just move these legs as that seems to make enough sense. So this brace won't be seen from the back and it doesn't, sorry, this brace won't be seen from the front and it doesn't overhang at the back so it won't hit up against the wall. Uh, this leg, the uh, computer leg, needs some bracing uh, so it's one unit. That'll do for that body there. Uh, I mentioned in the initial video that this was also to um, prevent my cat from getting into the computer. Uh, currently what he does is sits on top of my computer and climbs up via the power button, which then turns off my computer. So we want to put um, a front panel here. The actual dimensions of that probably don't matter too much. I'm not overly concerned. I sort of go by feel. I'm going to use the same 9mm material uh, as the side panels. However, this pattern on it, I'll probably make it go all the way through rather than just revealing part of a layer because uh, I want some good airflow and I also want this to be removable. So for now, I'm going to just leave that to hover there. Uh, but I'm thinking sign standoffs. I've had a bit of a look online and you can get aluminium sign standoffs or brass sign standoffs meant for like big advertising, that sort of stuff. And they're relatively inexpensive, but would make this front panel removable, like just screw into the legs and then the front panel would get sandwiched. So really, I, at this stage, I'm pretty much done for the design and I'd take this into Max Cut, which I've already shown off, and make my cut list. There's lots of things you could do on a design like this. Keep adding the filleting details, add the groove details, add all the joinery. I find the joinery is perhaps less important to add in the model uh, because I'm really trying to get a good idea of what it looks like rather than all the mechanical properties of it. So probably the only thing that's stopping this from being perhaps a proper desk is some sort of drawer and I'm thinking We'll add uh, like a stationary drawer just here. At this stage, that's relatively unimportant. Uh, because this is plywood, I'm just gonna screw that up into the top. So it would be a floating shelf, floating drawer type system. So at this stage, I don't wanna model that. Uh, I'm still sort of figuring out the details of that. But if we compare this with the desk that I originally modeled this off. It's not too far off now. Obviously this panel here is different and the black up the top is different. I did that just by extruding a half millimeter layer and then from all directions. So it's not perhaps the most accurate way to do it, but it gives me that really good representation, uh, which I then handed to the wife and she went, yay, I love this. And we went from there. Hopefully that'll give you some sort of insight into the design process I go through when I'm sketching stuff up in Fusion 360, there will usually be some sort of paper sketch first to give me the idea, and maybe three or four different projects uh, as the designs evolve. And I tend to like to create new projects rather than perhaps rewriting all the history when I'm still at that idea stage of it. Thanks for watching.